but maybe I'll start with just welcoming, um, welcome everyone once again uh, on my behalf as well to the first Uptime conference. And I, I hope that everyone has had uh, such a good time as uh, I have and on watching the talks and, and, and uh, having the ad hoc great discussions in the, in the, during the breaks. And I'm, I'm really happy to see all of you here and hope, hope you really enjoy uh, this session. Um, with that, my name is Heikki Nausen and I'm a field CTO and co-founder at Ivan. Uh, today, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the history and what it went into. Why did we actually start Ivan and what drives us, the, 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 the kind of team? What, what, what is our mission? What's our, why, why are we working in this space? I want to share uh, also for the benefit of, of perhaps ho hopefully giving ideas on technical implementation, how just how we built Ivan and kind of the technologies that we build, uh, build it upon. And last, last, I want to share a couple of ideas, not too much of our predictions, but hopefully some ideas on why we uh, think open source is such an important um, um, part of a kind of a modern um, software uh, development. But with that, um, let's get started. Ivan is all about developers. And as, as I said here, it's kind of our mission is to make developers' lives easier. And that's kind of why we started, and that's why we're in open source space. That's why we're in a managed service space to really em uh, empower the uh, developers to, to make change. If I look at myself um, um, and kind of uh, with, the, with the, my history in, in software engineering for a long time and all the kind of uh, super excited moments and some of the uh, struggles, if I would distill that into what makes developers happy, it's the ability to make change, to be able to jump on a, on a say, interesting uh, business or, or technical challenge, really devote time on or sort, sorting that out. Anything that stands behind it, it kind of, are oh, we gonna couple, uh, have a couple of struggles? There's an example on, on, on perhaps mine and my, my co-founder's motivations. But it's, it's away from that problem. It's really away from that kind of uh, getting the right results, getting the satisfaction of, 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 the, of the job. Um, in the past, uh, kind of, we personally we spent a lot of uh, struggles struggles with getting projects off the ground. Either it was um, getting through all the approvals and budgeting and getting the hardware in place, getting the right software, uh, or going to the operations team and requesting for their uh, support on on our uh, say uh, technology choices. We often utilized open source ourselves uh, in. Uh, in kind of our or, or different projects for us, for for the freedom, for being able to get started immediately, and for for the kind of uh, ability to tinker and utilize it to, into one way or the other you want. But when we went into uh, projects that targeted uh, some kind of production service, or or sometimes we often faced that. Uh, there was an operation unit that most often didn't have, perhaps have the experience or the excellence in running that or, or the skills or didn't even want to run um, open source technologies. And for us, the open source technologies was something that we found interesting for both the technical excellence and, and the communities of the, of the available resources um, around that uh, space. Um, I'm a big fan nowadays of DevOps. Uh, and uh, in a in a con or in a manner, what I mean with it is th this abolishment of boundaries between uh, separate development and operations teams, really bringing together uh, a group of people that really are fully responsible of the full life cycle of a, of a, of a service or a, a project or a, or a product. And I think this this has really enabled us then to revisit those decisions. It's it's within the team's responsibilities and, and areas of expertise to pick and choose the right tools. So now we can finally, finally uh, utilize those open source tools um, uh, in that context. Um, looking back, this is kind of easy idea, we had a lot of experience on running that, say, Postgres. We had the expertise on, on uh, how to run it uh, in a fashion where we know that backups are taken on, on a kind of scheduled in the in the walls. We knew that we had the tools and the expertise to build them in a, in a way how they are kind of fault tolerant and can uh, sustain different kind of uh, 
uh, failures, in essence being kind of, say, production ready or, or kind of what we would expect from um, uh, a stack being part of something that serves actual customers. But that was us then to kind of reflect that to uh, most of the teams, obviously running Postgres database is not really an expertise for a common uh, software development, uh, developer. Uh, to amplify it, there's a lot of good, interesting technologies and uh, being able to kind of master all of them is just um, kind of, what did we expect? Um, and even kind of then the other side of that, even if you could do that, and as we could do it, it's the work is often repetitive. It's it's a time away from the actual uh, working on the real business problem or real itch that you have that you wanna wanna solve out. So um, no, so it, it's kind of combination of these struggles that we really kind of uh, came together and figure out that let's let's create a service out of out of this. Let's help developers like ourselves. Um, and Ivan is really started as a Postgres as a service, kind of codifying a lot of that expertise. We, we knew that if we could offer this as a package a managed service to our customers, we would help a lot of developers uh, like us. We would enable a lot of developer teams to build on top of the uh, technologies and select uh, selected technologies that we loved and we knew that uh, were technically uh, solid. Same uh, kind of item from other angle. And of course, uh, if we could package and help or, or offer these technologies as a, as a solid service, then we could at the same time, we could help the, the teams to adopt these technologies. So instead of going on uh, with um, whatever suit that was offered perhaps from the uh, production um, uh, or say operations team or or some other kind of pre-selected party, uh, we could now uh, help the teams to really have a selection and have a have a choice on the tooling and especially on the open source for all the values that open source brings into the table. So based on this, Ivan was really built as a service that we thought that we would have loved to exist at the time when, uh, when we created it. And kind of very happy that uh, we could, could do it and very happy that we are, we are even here, here to tell about it and we can, we can share the news. We have a lot of happy uh, customers and it's, it's a great place to be and see that excitement from those teams and from our customers, then being able to adopt uh, open source technologies and building applications, then being able to utilize the best of, best of breed what is actually available on the market. For, of soon argue that open source is, is kind of the, that's the most powerful tools available. And kind of we started with a Postgres as a service, but we quickly started to expand that to other technologies as well. And that opens up interesting doors as well. There's a lot of great open source technologies. There's a lot of innovation happening in the space. Us being able to then bring those tools to the developers to build their applications and utilize uh, the best of the breed new technology without having to spend perhaps the time and, and uh, figuring out the expertise to run any particular tooling. I'm really happy that we are kind of on that uh, journey as well. Just yesterday we announced ClickHouse as a, as a, as a service. So again, uh, bringing data warehousing capabilities to any and all teams around there without kind of having to have the operational experience of figuring out how to, how to run and operate it. And all the time it's an open source technology. So uh, having that uh, same joys and the freedoms and the values from open source uh, in the mix. Um, I'll share a couple of other top, uh, thoughts on, on uh, this later, but let's jump into uh, how did we implement uh, uh, Ivan platform uh, with the hopes that there's some, some insights and we can share some of our success and perhaps uh, food for thought. So, so Shouldn't be as a surprise, Postgres as a service was our starting point, so we are using Postgres as our system of a record database. Uh, we know uh, how to run that. Uh, we know how to run that in a kind of uh, fault-tolerant manner on, 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 on essentially 
anywhere. We know how to manage backups. That's our kind of uh, bread and uh, butter. Um, we are utilizing, uh, my co-founders have written Hanno here, created a PG Lookout uh, op open source uh, um, Postgres monitoring and, and kind of uh, tooling for performing failovers. Uh, same as PG Horde, another open source project that runs our backups. That's kind of something that we are using on our own, own uh, uh, setup as well. Uh, this system of record for us stores everything in, in a, um, kind of go, that goes into uh, users or subscriptions or, or any, any critical data that goes into rendering then the few further uh, uh, customer Ivan services. With um, kind of knowing, knowing that we have a persistent data store that we can trust, now we can start to layer out with uh, a lot of stateful, uh, stateless services around the core. So we have a whole lot, lot, a bunch of uh, services that rely on that single data store, but can then work on uh, running tasks uh, in our platform. So these are, for example, uh, uh, the ones on the uh, left or, or right <laughs> represent uh, uh, the, kind of the virtual machine instances that we provision uh, from clouds to implement uh, customer services. And these stateless applications are essentially kind of uh, um, responsible for doing that and then monitoring, doing setup and monitoring over the life, the life uh, cycle of that, of that setup. One thing that we believe very strongly in Ivan is, is uh, converging operations or the declarative uh, deployment. So um, we essentially have a, uh, the desired state or, or the subscription uh, in the database that is a record. Hey, now we have a, now we want an Apache Kafka cluster with nine nodes uh, running in uh, Google Europe West uh, one, for example. And then these stateless services are continuously monitoring whether we can fulfill that service. And that's a powerful model. Now, we, if we can detect any kind of error, we are uh, confident that we'll eventually get to fixing the problem. No matter whether the error is say transient, we're out of uh, cloud resources, or there's a network outage, or um, maybe one of our developers or yours truly wrote a bug that broke uh, our provisioning logic. So no matter what it is, that when that situation is fixed, then the automation will still kind of do progress towards that uh, uh, known or desired state. And that's, that's a really great model. Uh, very common nowadays, but um, much more easier to handle uh, for error cases rather than maybe perhaps a more traditional uh, imperative. Let's send a message on queue that something needs to happen. Ivan runs on Ivan, by the way, and this is so we implement our system of a record on the same, uh, or it's it's exactly the same as any other uh, Ivan service. And this is something that you know, when we perfected a lot of this provision and error handling logic, we can now rely on, on everything in our infrastructure. If our own system of records does a failover, we handle it exactly the same. We backfill the re resources, create an another replica. And same for all the stateless services. So we have this continuous monitoring that we're using both for customer services and, and, uh, and ourselves. Yes, and then um, moving onwards, we quickly uh, realized that we needed a reliable communication medium between, uh, say, our uh, control plane and, and uh, the services and the uh, virtual machines that we have running across the clouds. And we selected Apache Kafka for this purpose, and we've been very, very happy with this uh, uh, choice. Um, we had several reasons to pick uh, Apache Kafka, and they are kind of uh, go beyond also perhaps what serves us. Uh, and first, first and foremost is uh, Kafka is by design uh, fault tolerant and distributed. So this would allow us a medium that even if we had uh, losses of uh, or failures on this uh, Kafka infrastructure itself, the, all the clients that connected either from our control plane or or the uh, uh, um, uh, services and virtual machines out, out there, we could always wire these together and recover from those errors. Um, 
second uh, part uh, is that um, Kafka is really great with this ordering guarantees, and um, we found the, the model where the kind of Kafka has shifted responsibility of message delivery, tracking, and all that logic to clients, um, and that. Uh, works really uh, well in our context. We have a whole bunch of clients. We're nowadays running a fleet of size, sized about 80,000 virtual machines across uh, our different clouds that connect to our Kafka infrastructure. So it would be fairly impossible to uh, do tracking of individual messages, which ones were delivered, which order to which clients. And Kafka excels on this kind of workloads. So. Anyone who uh, writes a message to Kafka can um, rely on the message being persistent and being ev eventually delivered. Um, same way, the, or the whoever is consuming those events from uh, Kafka has a really easy way of actually uh, crash proofing. So just we keep a keep a cursor or keep a snapshot what we have read and what we have processed by these order and guarantees and kind of being able to read from uh, a snapshotted place we can always guarantee that we del deliver the messages and we know that what we eventually get is the latest uh, uh, latest what we are supposed to uh, receive um, and third of course kafka has excellent scalability pr uh, properties. It's kind of the, the the distribution model where it has that the clients are uh, connecting only to the to the brokers that are are uh, dealing with a certain partition or shard of of, of a data. Is is uh, it scales very close to linear in our um, experience. So even if we have grown uh, from very uh, early few uh, services to what we are running as of today, we've been able to keep that part of the architecture and just uh, increase our, our capability by uh, increasing the number of cluster nodes in, in those Kafka clusters. What was really kind of also an important moment for us and maybe a little bit by, by accident. So we started as a Postgres as a service company, but we needed Kafka internally to run our uh, service. And we spent uh, quite a lot of time in perfecting the operations of, of running that Apache Kafka, managing how that is deployed and set up and, and how we do we react into failures, how do we do say, a balancing of uh, load between those. We realized that it's a, it's a really great technology. We are really reaping great benefits, so, but it's very, dif very difficult or not very difficult, but say, somewhat tricky uh, to run and operate. So it was a, and we realized then that we need to make this as a service as well. There's bound to be a lot of developers, a lot of applications that could benefit from kind of being able to build on the foundation of Apache Kafka, but without, uh, without perhaps needing kind of all the le lessons learned and all the experience in running and operating it. And that was kind of first of many, many to come. We realized at the same point that that's, this is something that we can now really enable these technologies, give them in the hands of developers uh, to, to be used as, as building applications. Um, next to our uh, monitoring stack, uh, so InfluxDB plus Grafana, pretty uh, de facto uh, open source tools. So we uh, utilize the same, no, no big surprises there. Um, we did uh, one, to utilize, or we, we ended up utilizing Kafka as a transport medium. Since we had that for the signal in channel, we wanted to reuse that for delivering all the uh, metrics messages as well. And our reasoning there was that we knew that we're gonna have a lot of clients uh, talking to our uh, databases. We wanna uh, reduce the number of connections, decouple these uh, two endpoints. So we have a lot of now clients that write into that Kafka and then we can separately on our back end, then just make sure that we have the capacity to, to process those messages when they're coming in. And this would help us again with a lot of uh, operational issues. We had our influx DB down for uh, due to upgrades or our own, own faults, or we got the uh, huge spikes after a lot of clients connected after our network outage, for example. So Kafka helped us to kind of 
mm, balance this and then work on our back and fix our own issues and we could still feed in the perfect history of the metrics that we ca uh, gathered. So for us, just monitoring metrics, but very useful if, if you're thinking about the different kinds of IoT cases. We did face, unfortunately, as we grew, uh, issues with InfluxDB scalability. The open source version comes uh, or doesn't uh, support clustering, um, uh, or at least didn't at the, at the time we were looking at. And we were kind of wondering on, on whether that's something that we could embark on, on also making a solution that uh, we could open source now to have clustered InfluxDB uh, services. And for us, this driver was just the amount of metrics that we were collecting from our a fleet grew before uh, beyond what we could handle with the, any reasonable sized uh, instance. But um, we came across a technology, very promising technology uh, called M3DB, uh, originated from Uber, and, and their scale just uh, kind of really made us appreciate that technology. So it's a distributed uh, time series database, really um, designed to deal with the kind of massive uh, volumes of, of time series data. Um, and kind of here, uh, we really loved the, the fact that we had picked Kafka uh, in the beginning for this delivery. Now this allowed us to do parallel develop development Without any modifications to the client, we could feed in the same exact uh, uh, monitoring and metrics numbers to uh, InfluxDB and, and M3. And we could do kind of development while we're co operating. We could figure out that our, our dashboards and monitoring uh, uh, dashboards and all of our alerting infrastructure does it result with the same same numbers. And we could we would keep doing this until we were fully satisfied that okay now we have have a have a successful migration to M M3. So again, something that Kafka really enabled, the reusing of the existing data stream and uh, collected data. I may need to do a, a quick shout out here uh, to something that our friends logs.io just recently uh, published, I think this week or last week, uh, an open source project on, on uh, transforming Grafana dashboards from InfluxDB query language into Pr Prometheus uh, query language. And they published a project around this and. Uh, with the origin, they used some of the stuff that we publi or we uh, published when we were doing this conversion. It was, wasn't really kind of, a, we didn't intend it to be product, but as a kind of testament to how open source work and how we can build on e each other's work, uh, they now have a, have a, good, a good tool. I for, don't know links here, sorry. I, I need to, we need to send that maybe uh, later. And maybe kind of as a last point here again, M3, we spent our, our day effort on figuring out how to run that and how to make that. We wanted to make it as a service to provide that again, developers with the option on, on kind of building on top of a great open source technology uh, without, without needing perhaps to go into details on how, ex how just, uh, just how exactly you'll, you'd uh, run it. Um, last to complete our stack is uh, open search that we used for, for storing our logs essentially. So we, we pump full or we utilize journal D on, on, on the VM sides and we have a, implemented a component journal pump, um, creative name that uh, reads that journal injects into Kafka stream and again, same properties, no matter if we are loaded on the, on the, on the open source cluster side or backend side or we have, a, have a, uh, a bug on somewhere in the pipeline, we can still get the perfect uh, kind of trail of records from, uh, uh, from the virtual machines for uh, uh, analysis if you have any, any, any faults. That's pretty much the logically. If we now look at, uh, perhaps looking back, some of the challenges we have had. So that definitely the transition from InfluxDB to M3 for, uh, uh, for the reasons of the, just the volumes of data. But it, uh, we still consider that it's much uh, evolutionary rather than any kind of uh, larger change. We did have uh, to uh, make one major change to our pipeline and uh, that is uh, due to the number of clients, we're running about 80,000 uh, VMs in public cloud and all of these were connecting to 
uh, Kafka clusters. If and when there were any kind of network hiccup, hiccups, we would get a storm of all of those 80,000 uh, nodes coming in pretty much immediately. So we had to switch over and implement a, a simple uh, web, so uh, web socket proxy uh, for our own uh, use case to limit the number of uh, concurrent uh, clients that go into Kafka itself. Uh, some of this is probably something that we still want to fix and address in Kafka clients, clients and how they behave. So um, since the Kafka clients, they connect multiple brokers uh, uh, for the actual delivery of the messages. But unfortunately, many of the implementations, they have uh, error handling that leads to tearing down all connections and reconnecting to all brokers on any error, or very aggressive um, uh, kind of retry backoffs. If, if the connection fails, they just keep drumming, uh, drumming it. So this might be an area that we could, uh, could help to fix uh, with, the, with the clients uh, themselves. All right. Mm, yeah, so last part of the presentation, I want to quickly touch on, on something why open source is so dear to us at Ivan and to me as well. I call them open source superpowers. And many of these have been covered in this conference and in pretty much all open source uh, 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 talks, but hopefully I have also a couple of insights on from, from myself. But let's start with uh, the perhaps the most obvious and the arguably more, most important as well, and that's a collaboration. Uh, standing on the shoulders of each other, being able to create and utilize others' experiences and, and the kind of solutions and, and reapply them to different, building something great all the time, creating this massive, vast knowledge base of, of kind of expertise, solutions, problems. And this is, this is not only uh, code or bug fixes or, or new features, but this is all types of uh, documentation, even opening a ticket and, and, and sharing your experiences on performance or, or uh, a, a problem that you faced. And I think this is, this is uh, yesterday um, on the keynote we heard about this, um, uh, say more of an organism, more of a movement rather than uh, licenses. And I very much believe that as well. And one part of this collaboration is not only uh, the ability to be able to uh, uh, get that insight from others, but it's also the very active and very genuine uh, kind of outwards pushing that information out to others for, for the kind of a true uh, benefit of others. I think the, um, other side of side of the story, and then uh, for me working in uh, data space and, and kind of uh, as part of my my history, I think open source has the great uh, way of uh, bringing about <coughs> de facto standards on on data access and APIs. This can be either uh, in organization or across organization. Having that knowledge, having the same set of tools, having the same set of uh, uh, kind of expertise. And this is really great when we start to think about how do we um, reuse and, uh, and recombine uh, 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 data for, for kind of making use of what we have for, for greater innovation uh, within organizations or, or even uh, between organizations. Uh, open source, for me, a lot of it is about being in control of your own uh, data. Uh, uh, processing uh, uh, journey, being able, being in control of your data and being in control of being able to continue that processing no matter what. It's your data, it's your processing. You uh, um, are in control on, on how to do it. And this is comes into, with open source, there's no limits on how do you utilize your data, for what purpose. There's no, uh, no one can revoke a license or, or a, a product doesn't go uh, unavailable because of a single company uh, uh, leaves the market or, or changes business terms or, or changes licenses. You always have the right to operate and you have the right to operate at any scale on, on in any manner what you, what you want. Um, I wrote here similar is right to repair, perhaps uh, borrowing from the hardware world, but open source has, uh, has, you have the ability to be able to inspect and fix and 
publish your fixes and operate your fixes. And this is, if you have a problem, you have the ability to go in about and fix things and not be beholden on someone else's priorities or, 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 or uh, kind of their uh, business uh, situation. Lastly, productivity, uh, which is very, very near, uh, dear to me. So I think uh, open source here is, well, if I go back to what I talked a little bit about, kind of being a big fan and uh, believer in, in DevOps with a with with uh, model that it really gives the responsibility and gives the, the area of, of uh, decision to the team uh, itself. I think cloud is important enabler in that sense that it gives you the uh, immediate access to all resources that you would need. But similarly, open source is an important uh, aspect of that, giving that immediate access to software. And I, I think those two together really have the ability to really help developers eliminate all dependencies out of their way and hopefully thus kind of create, say, happier dev developers, make their life easier. All right. That's all I had today. I hope that I was able to give you something to think about. And now if, if there's anything that I can continue on, on those tracks, or if you have any questions, I'd love to uh, dig in uh, then and, and discuss, either here or on, on the breaks later. Thank you. Thank you. So we do have couple of questions already, thank you. We do have a couple of questions already on Slido for you. Um, they're brilliant. Based off the experience, would you now build Ivan differently? No, I think, I think we're very happy with our architect. I think, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question in that sense. There might be multiple technology solution, but we have also the experience on now how we build it and we know kind of how it works and how it ticks. Yeah, I love that. That's really cool. Thank you. Um, another really good question. Um, how is Ivan contributing back to open source? Oh, very good question. Um, I didn't, I forgot to mention it here in presentations, but I think uh, there are many ways. Uh, one is that um, kind of we being open source users and contributors in the past already. Now I think it's for what I find really, really exciting that uh, last year we launched open source program office, which employs at the moment 13 and hopefully more people mm -hmm. uh, working full time on the upstream uh, open source projects to make sure that they uh, kind of we get the best uh, technologies out there. We have a, a program for, for uh, our, all of our employees that want to work on open source. We want to also help and encourage them. So we have a kind of a hourly rate on, 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 on contributions on, on open source. And I hope that also this event is one part of those, kind of sharing those experiences, sharing those knowledge, bringing people uh, together. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's a really nice summary of you know, what we have, and we have a lot of things going on. Um, we're a little bit out of time, but I am going to encourage everybody who um, has more questions for you or maybe wants to hear the things that you don't say when we're recording um, <laughs> to find either you or <clears throat> if you can find Chief Product Officer Hanu around the place. He's another co-founder. They have stories to tell, <laughs> uh, but we don't get them on video. So um, definitely catch them for a chat. We're going into a short break now. Stay here if you want to hear from Steve about open telemetry. Go downstairs if you want to hear from Elisa about MySQL and Kubernetes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.